Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about an upcoming pattern that's gonna bring flash flooding and a cool down into early next week. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Here's the overall uh, satellite view for this morning, July the 15th. You can definitely see we had that short wave that we've been talking about the last three days that's now diving down onto the the central u.s bringing some heavier rains into parts of northern missouri into uh, illinois as well as uh, michigan this morning we also have a little feature down here that we've been talking about too as well it's our tropical wave that's been impacting florida with some very heavy rain and then our active monsoon is alive and well with a lot of flash flooding uh that's happening but man yesterday and it was really intense in Iowa. We've been talking about it and we were really concerned about this particular event. They actually have up to 44 tornado reports preliminary so far from the National uh, Weather Service. They actually have 12 confirmed tornadoes. These are preliminary and we'll still be doing the surveys, but man, it was a dangerous day in Iowa there with a tornado breakout and that that is, uh, that severe weather has calmed down a little bit, but that's still going to be shifting uh, off to the central U.S. down to down here. And then I'll be p pushing off into the east uh, later on by Friday with some more heavier rains. And yes, you do have sp sporadic severe severe th threat into uh, some wind reports, as well as even a tornado report in uh, Utah uh, yesterday with some wind reports back in Virginia. But man, that flash flooding was really severe and uh, arizona yesterday it does not take much i mean this is this is the last three day rainfall uh that fell and you can definitely see by, by the chart here up here in tucson and phoenix they've been picking up one two three inches of rain and and just yesterday in flagstaff this is what 0.6 inches of rain did i mean there was a severe flash flooding you got dry soil and you got a lot of water in the mountains that come off the mountains and, and rush down and just quickly it can cause flash flooding and this sent a car down down the street it only takes about six inches in this type of environment to elevate your car and send it floating so if you live in this area this this uh, monsoon is going to be prevalent over the next several days at least and yes these could happen quickly like within five minutes you're you're seeing this type of environment so definitely pay attention and be weather or well and, and as soon as it starts raining you know you know he head home and you know and, and get in a safe place if you can because uh yeah it, it can be pretty dangerous and it doesn't take much and uh over there to cause some serious flash flooding and a, a quick amount of time so Here's the setup for today. So we've got that boundary, that same system that was over uh, the Dakotas and uh, you know parts of Nebraska yesterday, especially into Iowa. That is shifting off a little bit further off to the southeast. It's a little, it's a slow mover. So we're still going to have heavier rains in parts of southeastern Iowa, getting into Kansas, into Missouri. That'll start impacting uh, parts of Illinois. There's your monsoon. It's going to be active again into uh, Arizona, especially like uh, in tucson area uh, that's going to be pretty prevalent today where we just could see some like sp sporadic uh shower activity uh, and kind of daytime heating thunderstorms in parts of the southeast Get what they call these sea breeze fronts that come off the gulf here and could lift up to the north uh, into the late afternoon hours that's kind of what you saw down here in the south yesterday and to uh, parts of south south of dallas where they had a pretty big thunderstorm that blew up off that sea breeze front and that went over and then it just kind of died as uh, as the sun went down so here's your setup for today with your heavier rainfall uh, they do have a slight risk for excessive rain in uh, parts of uh, arizona and getting into uh, new mexico so that monsoon is going to be prevalent there and the boundary again you're still going to be looking at some heavier rain in parts of uh, iowa and south uh, southeastern uh, wisconsin and there's that uh, short wave with our tut low and our tropical wave here still going to be bringing some heavier rains especially on the west side of florida this afternoon so here's your temperatures the one thing that's definitely stands out is this ridge has actually shifted more or less into the interior regions and a lot of the coastal communities are going to get a re start getting a reprieve from the heat and these are more or less average temperatures of what you typically see 
uh, this time of year as the ridge will start to build and kind of dominate on parts of uh, I Idaho and Montana. But there's, you can definitely see highs in the 70s. That's underneath all the cloud cover and all the rain. And that's going to be pretty prevalent as we try to warm up uh, into the southeast. But it hasn't really been that hot at all so as we transition into uh as we go into the day on uh, friday you can definitely see this boundary just doesn't really move that far but it will shift the, the heavier rains uh, off into uh, indiana going into ohio that'll be some of your heavier rains coming up on the day and again you'll still have that sporadic daytime afternoon uh, shower and thunderstorm activity in the afternoon 20 30 40 percent chance in a lot of areas down here in the south and uh, southeast so yes there's the there's the look on the excessive rain as we go into the uh friday there uh you got the heavier rains pretty much parked over indiana and ohio this area has been crushed as well with some very heavy rain as of late and there's going to be impacting uh, again with the monsoons remain alive and well and there's your high temperatures as we go into friday yeah it you can definitely see the ridge isn't definitely as as dominant as it was and it has been for a while it's still hot but it's not nearly as intense uh, as the uh, the ridge kind of pulses down by the time we get into friday as we go into saturday that that same system will continue uh, continue moving off into the east and now the northeast gets nailed again with a lot of heavier rain and some of your stronger storms so places like philly places like uh, new york city uh getting into uh parts of uh you know boston area rhode island all those places are going to be impacted with those heavier rains again so you have again this is another area that's been impacted hard as of late and it's you're going to be impacted again uh as we come up in the day on uh saturday and there's your there's your heavier rains will start to you know be over those eastern parts of uh, pennsylvania uh, northern parts of new jersey uh getting into uh, all the eastern states here into you know connecticut or massachusetts southern ports of uh, vermont new hampshire so these areas will be a little bit more susceptible to see that heavier rains as we go into the day on uh, saturday there's your temperatures of course where all the rain and all the all the you know the cooler on the boundary is that's underneath that that's where you see uh, the cooler weather you can definitely see down here in Kansas and Oklahoma I mean Oklahoma City has been below average for three straight weeks <laughs> you know Dallas is this basically the same way I mean even 96 that's hot but that's literally average this time of year so it's been a very unusual summer and it, and it actually looks like it continues uh, for the foreseeable future so you know because as we transition to Sunday here's the setup I mean We've got that ridge that is going to be dominating over uh, more or less uh, Idaho and Montana. The trough, it somewhat weakens a little bit because we saw that those higher temperatures down in, you know, down in the parts of the south. But we got another d deepening trough up to the north. And we have this trough that's going to be digging in from the Pacific Northwest. That's going to continue to remain those cooler conditions off the coastal regions and keep the ridge mainly in the interior regions and well to the north. So as, as this builds, this will allow this trough to deepen even further, and this will start impacting again with some cooler conditions going to be start filtering in by the time we get into uh, Monday uh, with, yeah, so those below average anomalies start to creep back in into parts of the central U.S. and down to the south again with a pretty strong cold front for July standards. I mean, 10, 15, 20 degrees below average at times so yeah those are cool you know much cooler conditions that you would basically see and the hottest time of the year as uh yes the ridge bi keeps building to the north it's pretty dominant over uh, idaho and montana and well north into canada and that just deepens it underneath so yeah definitely some cooler conditions as we go into monday and that'll be a slow moving front again so this front gets pretty far south so those areas into oklahoma and to uh, parts of a uh, you know missouri here into arkansas the tennessee valley that'll start creeping into uh, north texas northern parts of uh, louisiana there's those two systems out here in the Pacific. That was uh, hurricane, which is now Hurricane Felicia. There's actually going to probably be another storm that's going to be forming beyond behind that. All that really does, these aren't directly impacting land masses, but it actually keeps the flow alive 
for the monsoon. So that's why this is probably going to continue to remain active for the Four Corners regions with those daily afternoon thunderstorms. So definitely be on the lookout for that because not only does it continue for the next couple of days, but it actually continues all, uh, at least into the early part of uh, next week. So yes, as we go into uh, Tuesday, July the 20th, I mean, yeah, look at those anomalies. I stopped the clock here at one o'clock in the afternoon because when you see these at you know 20 degrees below average, this doesn't imply that's going to be your high temperature today. It's probably not going to be a high of 75 in Texas, right? So, but all that really tells you is that hey, we're going to have thunderstorms around. We're going to have cloudy conditions around. So at that one o'clock time frame, hey, we could be underneath the thunderstorm, and it could be cooling down the temperatures to you know 75, you know 77 degrees, which would be that 20 degrees below average and then once the rain stops and the sun comes out then you spike up to the 80s so it's still going to be cooler uh, you know as far as your overall average high over that 24 hour time span but yeah some definitely some much cooler conditions are going to be impacting a lot of the same areas that you're going to be that has seen the cooler conditions but this one's going to be even stronger than what you have seen of late because this is easily going to drop down temperatures in the 80s but not, it's not going to stop at T Dallas. It's going to continue to go. And this could reach the central U.S., uh, central Texas as well with those, uh, uh, you know, below average temperatures. We're talking places like Waco. We're, we're talking places like Austin. Yeah, cold front in, in the middle of July. <laughs> yeah, so that is, and this is all going to reach into uh, Mississippi and Alabama and getting into Georgia as well. So, I mean, those are definitely some cooler conditions. And with that slow moving front, it's going to dump some fair amount of rain for July standards. Now, granted, this area is your one of your driest months of the year. So, yes, we're not talking April rains. We're not talking May rains, but we're talking July rains. You get half as much on average in that time of year. But, yeah, any rain is a welcome relief that you typically would see in July. That would give you a cool down for much of the south. And then uh, that's going to be prevalent as we go into the day on a Tuesday with that slow moving front, which would kind of just ooze down further south as we get into uh, midweek by next week. And so as we transition into the 21st time frame, man, look at that cold front. I mean, you know, when you're getting to 15, those below average anomalies reaching all the way down into Mexico, that's some serious cold, cooler air for July standards. And that's what we're going to see in the desert southwest. I mean, that's going to continue to remain cooler with those cloudy conditions, that thunderstorm activity. And all that really does is that cold front kind of shifts off into the Four Corners region next week. And so that'll keep the temperatures down a lot. And for much of the desert southwest and kind of eating away at that drought in these areas. And so as we go into that Wednesday, you can definitely see where the setup is on the rain. Where that cold front is, that's that boundary. So then you have those overriding conditions. So yeah, it continues to remain active where you know where you are along that cold front. I mean, parts of California is going to get in a little bit of the action, but not not as much as the Four Corners region for sure. And of course, as as uh, Texas, Florida remains somewhat drier because you you've been impacting with a lot of rain from that tropical wave. But that'll be gone by the time we get into you know next week so as we go into thursday you can definitely see the cooler conditions just remain so at, you know the cooler conditions remain you know colder down to the south uh you know, for the foreseeable future i i just really don't see um an overall big change in this pattern you know really anytime soon and so i mean before I mean, we had some snow up here in northern Canada. I mean, we're getting in the middle of July, so, you know, September rolls around. Yeah, there's going to be parts of the U.S. going to be talking snow again. So <laughs> we're not that far off. I mean, this is almost halfway through, you know, meteorologically summer. Actually, today is halfway because technically meteorologically fall starts September 1st. You know, actual fall starts, you know, middle, you know, the 20th of September. So, but yeah, I mean, we're not that far away from, uh, you know, we're talking snowstorms, you know, six eight weeks from now parts of uh parts of the united states as well so yeah it's been a, a pretty unusual summer and you know and that's gonna looks like it continues as we go into thursday uh with those sporadic you know rain showers still prevalent down here for much of the south and southeast so if we look at the overall 
rain that we might get for the next week. I mean, you can definitely see it does remain dry for the Pacific Northwest. That's the unfortunate part. So you are going to get a respite from the heat at least, but you're but you're not going to get any rain out of this deal. So, but you are going to see a little bit of rain into uh, parts of California. But man, look at the trough. Look at that active monsoon flow continues to remain active. So I do feel like Arizona is going to be under the gun. Parts of New Mexico is going to be under the gun, and that's going to creep into southern parts of Utah and uh, Colorado as well. And then where that cold front is and where those boundaries lie, that's where you're going to be your all your heavier rains from much of the Ohio Valley again. And that'll creep into the south uh, parts of Texas and all the way down to the coastline as we go into next week with that kind of that, that slow moving cold front that will drop heavier rains as we go throughout the week and and there's your there's your look at the, at the latest european model more or less implies uh, the same thing uh with this cold front possibly going all the way down into houston it's uh that's what some of the models are showing right now that that cold front could actually all the touch all the way down into the deep south and get into uh the coastal regions as we go into the day wednesday and like th that thursday type time frame so, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before.